Okay, so uh, thank you very much, Solis. It's a huge pleasure to be with you. Please sit down and. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I'd like to introduce Marie Besford, who is the person that requested for our audience of old friends. Please go forward. Your Holiness and um, Dharma friends. <clears throat> Microphone. It, it's an enormous pleasure, Your Holiness to have the opportunity just to say a few words to the gathering um, at the commencement of this reunion with you and also um, at, at the beginning of this dialogue with you. Um, as, as John has said, you may remember that when I was here um, with the Meridian Trust, when we, um, I had the opportunity to, to ask you on behalf of everybody who was here if you would participate in this reunion with, with us. And uh, for many of us, it's um, 40, between 40 and 45 years ago that we were all here um, taking teachings and um, participating in the Tibetan community here. And because, Your Holiness, um, we have all felt <coughs> our lives to be absolutely touched and transformed by our relationship with yourself and also with the Tibetan people, that we all wanted actually to come back to Dharamsala, to come back to our spiritual home, and to have this opportunity of, of meeting with you. Over the last 40 years, we have pretty much all attended teachings um, with you across the world, and we really wanted the opportunity to come back and in a much more informal and more intimate setting to actually have the opportunity of renewing our heart connection with you as our spiritual teacher. So this is the reason we have gathered. And Your Holiness, there, as you probably will know, there are people from all around the world here and um, people from all professions, because when we, when we all left Dharamsala, many people went out, started Dharma, Dharma um, situations, um, centers, um, Tibet support groups. There are um, Buddhist teachers, um, meditation teachers here. There are tanka painters, translators, doctors, lawyers, um, teachers, psychotherapists. So we've come back because we want to be able to share with you the influence that you have had on our lives and to be actually able to um, have a dialogue with you also about the next 20 years, which will take many of us actually up to 80 and 90 years of age if we're lucky enough to live that long. Also in the audience, Your Holiness, is the second generation of Buddhists. So put your hands up, the second generation of young people, so His Holiness can see all of you who've come back to Dharamsala to make acquaintance with His Holiness, and also that the children, the third generation of young Buddhists, Stand up so His Holiness can see the children. Where are you children? <laughs> so you can see, Your Holiness, the influence that both yourself and our, our Tibetan teachers and the, and, the, and the Tibetan community have actually had on all of these people that um, the second and the third generation have come back to see you. So we're here for this reunion and for this dialogue and actually, Your Holiness, for a trip down memory lane. <laughs> for, for, for a trip down memory lane. This <laughs> having old memories with yourself and actually all of our old friends from many years ago. So thank you. Okay, and so, uh, thank you. So, uh, for uh, an appreciation of all of our stories with you, Ariana Jones has a testimony and um, uh, a book of memor memories she'd like to offer. Okay. And, okay. And then uh, also we have a. This is our official His Holiness and Old Friends uh, card that everybody has. And it has a picture and a bit of poetry from uh, uh, Andy Weber. And so uh, there's an offering for you. And then finally, um, because I live in Mexico, uh, the Mexicans felt that 
His Holiness Karmapa has a black hat, and so you needed a black hat. So. <laughs> Okay, and uh, now I'd like us to start the process. So uh, first, the, the, today we're going to be covering three different uh, discussions. The first is East meets West, the second one is death and bereavement, and the third one will be the, uh, about capitalism and the new world. So uh, uh, first I'd like to introduce um, Kevin Rigby. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> There's too many things happening. Um, anyway, Gavin, and uh, Gavin of course has been here for more than 40 years. Thank you. <laughs> my name is Gavin Kilty, Your Holiness. Uh, I lived here in 14 years with my wife. Um, I studied at the Tibetan Library and then after that at the uh, um when Genlos and Gyatso was there. And now I live in England where I, I work for uh, Gentut Jimba as a translator, Pecha. So uh, I would like to talk uh, just for a few minutes on the subject East meets West. Yep. So many years ago, 40, 30, 40 years ago, as Marie pointed out, East met West. The Tibetan people tragically were forced to leave their homeland and sought refuge in India through the kindness of Prime Minister Nehru, came to in India for refuge. At around the same time, in the 60s and the 70s, for some many reasons, there was a great interest in Eastern spirituality. Many people had developed a great interest in, in finding Eastern spirituality. So many of us came out at that time. And when in India, we met Himalayan Buddhism. And I think, I hope I'm right in saying that maybe this was the first time that Himalayan Buddhism, Tibetan Buddhism, made a significant transmission to the Western world in that sense. And over the past 20, 30 years, this gradual transmission, the cultural transmission of Himalayan Buddhism has carried on into the West. And as such, now 30, 40 years on, I would like to pass some observations of where are we now? After 30, 40 years of this transmission in the West, what is the nature of the Buddhist, Himalayan Buddhism, um, how, it, how it has sorted itself in, into the West. And so, as His Holiness has said many times, practice is something that is very private. It is something within the mind and is not necessarily seen outside. And so I cannot judge what other people's practice is. But there is an external manifestation of the Dharma in the form of the literature, translations, books that have been written, Dharma centers, monasteries, some monasteries, and even in some universities where the Dharma is taught. And these external manifestations of the Dharma are there. They are the visible manifestations of the Dharma. And many who are non-Buddhists, well, this, is the, this is their meeting point. This is what they see when they first encounter Dharma. They see this. This is, this is what they see. And so I would like, I have some observations and I have some, mainly they are doubts. I have no answers. But after 30, 40 years of being in this business, I have some thoughts that I'd like to share with you, Rinpoche and with everybody here, and maybe we can, we can talk about them. For example, <coughs> if we take... Yes. Yes. Okay. So, if we take a Dharma center, or a, a Dharma center, um, no. Um, to me, in a Dharma center, in my, in, in, in my, from my observation, Dhamma Center is very much like a little Tibet. We go in there, and there are many. It's beautiful. There are tankas and statues all around the place. It is like a sort of mini Tibet. Mm -hmm. And as such, it is not really a Western tradition. Once mm -hmm. I was mm -hmm. listening... Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't need... Mm -hmm. 
No, no, we don't do that. There, there is. Once I was listening to Dagobert and Bichet, who lives in Germany, and he said, he said, you know, now is the time for you Westerners to have your own Buddhism, like Tibet, like Korea, like Japan. Now is the time you must own your own Buddhism. And so it seems to me that maybe he was saying that in our Dharma centers now and in, our, in the way that, that Buddhism has manifested in the West, maybe not so much, I just think maybe not so much do we need to depend upon Tibetan manifestations of the Dharma in the form of tankas and statues. Maybe it is time to develop our own. I was in one Dharma center and there was a Lama Chopa and one Anila, I think it was, when she made an offering, she played guitar. And she played guitar. It was a Western musical offering. And I maybe wonder if that is uh, the way forward. Another thing that I, I have observed, and this is <laughs> purely my observation. <coughs> no. no. One observation I, I have had is that it seems to me that when we enter into a Dharma center, sometimes our Western mind, our critical mind, our analytical mind, our inquiring mind, it seems sometimes we leave it outside the gate of the Dharma center. And we go in a Dharma center and we are very quick to put our hands together <laughs> and to have faith and devotion. Faith and devotion in Buddhism, of course, very important. But I, I, I wonder, we have a mind, we are in reasonably intelligent people, and we have an ability to think and, and to reason, and I wonder whether we can make use of this Western mind more <laughs> when we meet Buddhism, so that it is not just something that is put aside and immediately we devote ourselves without question, without thinking, to the, the teachings and the gurus and so forth. And I think, no, and I think so, that is an observation that I had. Someone said, for example, that science is organized skepticism. Organized skepticism. It is a kind of doubt that is continually sort of evolving, evolving, answer the doubt, come to a conclusion, and so forth. And many people, scientifically minded, not science, scientifically minded people, have come to me and they say, why? Why are you relying upon the words of a man who lived two and a half thousand years ago? Why, why do you take these words as if they were written in stone? Why are you not thinking, thinking, thinking all the time and developing your own attitudes? I, I find this question difficult to answer because in... Um, in Buddhism, His Holiness has often said, the ultimate authority is reasoning. Reasoning. But from the outside, it looks as if we also have the, the authority of the Buddha and the great Indian masters and Nagarjuna, Chandrakirti and so forth, and scripture. These are also authority. But scientists and many scientifically minded people will say, this, the authority should be a continual evolution. And as a Buddhist, I have you know, the greatest faith in the Buddha and the Indian masters. But I, am, I have to deal with these questions when I, I have to deal. And how do we deal, how are we going to deal with these questions when they come up? We cannot just run away to the mountains and ignore them. We have to face up to these, these facts. And so it seems to me that East meets West. East, we have the Himalayan Buddhism that we have met here in Dharamsala. West is our critical mind, a challenging mind. These two have to meet somehow in the mind. We have to meet. We cannot throw out, I feel, we cannot throw out our Western mind. And we cannot sacrifice our Western mind to the Dharma mind. And we cannot sacrifice the Dharma mind to the Western mind. There has to be a marriage a meeting, a meeting point. Um, another thing oh, is the literature. I've noticed that 
over the years, there are many books written about Buddhism. And m many of them seem to water down Buddhism, rather like the <coughs> Indians used to water down the milk <coughs> in, in the bazaar. <coughs> you know. <coughs> it seems to me that Buddhism has been watered down to suit people. For example, often there is no mention of sufferings, no mention of hell realms, and, and so forth. And some people say this is good because this is attracting people to Buddhism and a little Buddhism is better than no Buddhism. But other people say, no, this is not right because we are missing the essence of Buddhism here. We can't just pick and choose. Buddhism is not like a supermarket where we can just pick and choose. And I have to say, I have this problem. I don't know how to answer this because Buddha himself taught different things to different people. So therefore, for the teachers here among you, I'm not a teacher, but for Westerners teachers here, when you teach Buddhism, how do you deal with this problem? Do you leave out the unpleasant bits and just talk about the nice bits? How do you deal with this? This is something I haven't found an answer to. And of course in West now we have the New Age which is very popular. And these things are very popular and it's very nice and there's not much about suffering. So that's one thing. And then lastly, authority. Authority. It seems to me that the Buddha Dharma, when it went to the West, is rather like an immigrant, some new person from a culture moving into a new country. When they do that, they are often expected to change, to adopt to their new country. And some people have said to me, many people have said to me, you know, the Dharma must change to fit Western ways. And I'm thinking, maybe we have to change, <laughs> not the Dharma. <laughs> and, but maybe they have a point. But then the next question is, who changes? Who has the authority to change the Dharma so that it fits Western thinking? Western thinking is very advanced these days, for example, in terms it's okay to get angry, it's okay to, to express desire, things like remorse and regret, shame, modesty, and a lot of these things are not regarded as important, whereas in Buddhism these are changeless. No. So they have been there for centuries. And some people say, well, no, no, they must change. You know? But the other, some other people say, no, don't let it change. Let it evolve naturally. Dharma will evolve naturally. But then there's danger, I fear, if it evolves naturally, there's a danger of it becoming contaminated, polluted. In ancient Tibet in the 7th, 10th century, when Buddhism came from India to Tibet, there were these very strong kings who made sure that everything was controlled. But we live in a democracy, in a, in a world where the Dharma has spread all, for, all across the English-speaking world and the non-English-speaking world. And there is no control. It will, it will evolve and develop in a way that nobody has control. And so I, maybe I have some doubt, some fear that it may develop in a wrong way. But then on the other hand, should we control it? If so, who controls it? These, these are some, <coughs> just some doubts and some questions that I have. And that's it really. And I, I just feel that now at this point, 30, 40 years later, is it time now? Because we're now going to hand over to a new generation who, get, who will get their Buddhism on the internet. They don't have to come to India anymore. They can just go to dalalama.com and download the teachings. And so... It's, no, it's a new generation. Our responsibility, is it finished? I mean, and and, and how, do, how, should we, how should we deal with this new generation? That's all I have to say, Your Holiness. Um, thank you very much for listening. And I ha thank if you. you could respond, <coughs> I would be more than grateful. Thank you very much. Thank you. The point is, if we shoot the lender, <coughs> First day, <coughs> I want to express my greetings. 
and many of you, I think, very, very old friend, long time friend, and unchanging friend. Mm -hmm. So very good. So and, and also I want to apologize. You see, they, uh, suppose we start one o'clock, uh, but I have some uh, meeting some other people. Uh, so, a little bit late. <coughs> 30, 40, 45 years, as you mentioned. So, our body change. Uh, uh, generally speaking, even spirituality, spirituality or Meditation, you, see, you cannot stop that. <laughs> the per <coughs> permanent, sort of, I call it impermanent, always changing, momentarily changing. That is a part of nature. Uh, so, time always moving. No force can stop that. So, now, question is uh, we should, whether we should, uh, whether we utilize time properly or not. Use time for create more problem to other and also ultimately you yourself also in deep deep insight feel uh, unhappy. That's I think wrong way utilize, utilize time. But other hand uh, Every day, uh, so thinking one's own mind and try to make some certain kind of shape and rest of the day is with that sort of the motivation. Ka. Motivation. And that motivation is you carry whole day, and that means. If possible, serve other. If not, at least restrain harming other. That way, uh, here is uh, no differences about profession. Uh, so whatever your profession, with that motivation, it can be positive. Uh, so. And days, weeks, months, years, decades, not for five years. <laughs> if went, because if used that way, then spent. Uh, our life become meaningful. At least, we see we made some sort of contribution for at least for individuals, because of the happy mental state. And ourself also, you see, sooner or later, and will come. Then that day we feel no regret. I use my time for constructive way. So that's important. So I believe many of you, I think, use time on proper way, no, meaningful way. So that's important. Now you also do observations, right? No. Chick has a tongue good question. Are you sure Western mind in Buddhism? No, Chick. She numb your thing, my Jamal Jamal. This is the dream, my teacher of noon. Point, sort. Nellan tell us one. Meeting East and West. <coughs> now, last 51 years, my experience. Although I think, I think, uh, 30, 40 years ago, this is some occasion I mentioned, or I, I felt the uh, Eastern. Now here, mainly India. Uh, you see the. Uh, knowledge 
about emotion, about mind. Uh, I think quite. How's that? Sophisticated. Ah. Sophisticated. Uh, I mean, qu quite a detail. Because there is the practice of samadhi and vipassana, both not faith, not devotion, but training of mind. So naturally, any teaching where the practice of samadhi and the practice of vipassana, naturally, explanation about mind, how mind works, how emotion works. Uh, so, and then also in the Buddhism, uh, the pranja or the wisdom, and also in Buddhism, is the key sort of the uh, view is selflessness or anathema theory. Uh, so naturally, lot of sort of uh, I mean. In order to uh, argue uh, about anathema theory, you, see, you need more detailed sort of understanding about ignorance, about distorted sort of view. Uh, and distorted view, the counter sort of force, only the right view, not prayer, not just mere meditation. So naturally, more explanation about mind there. And then also in Tantrayana, the different level of mental state, awakening state, dream state, deep sleep state, or the state at the faint, at the time of faint. Uh, so in the West, uh, of course, the Judo-Christian tradition uh, the practice level, same. Practice of compassion, forgiveness, tolerance, and also contentment and self-discipline. All these, all major religion, same. Then, uh, then the f but the way to promote this basic human value. Uh, those religions which based on uh, the fate of create, creator, right. creator, uh, including uh, those, so the Hindu tradition, you see, because ultimately everything depends on creator. So faith is yes, alone sufficient, very important. Now, like in order to reduce self-centered attitude, faith, tremendous faith to God, creator, you totally submitted to God, that uh, reduce self-centered attitude. Whereas Buddhism, no concept of creator, also Jainism, and also one part of Sangya, no creator. Therefore, the oneself make effort, you see, to change our mind. Uh, it's not sort of a, sort of possible through prayer to change these things. Uh, so in the West, of course, science come from the West. You see, the scientist, uh, m most cases, the Judo-Christian background. So naturally, there are not much sort of, sort of, sort of pay much attention about mind or emotion, these things. Uh, then also, you see, I have, sort of, I have the view. Last, at least, I think, three, four thousand years, uh, people, uh, you see, eventually develop religious faith. So, so whenever we met some difficulties, we always pray. Uh, our hope put on creator or God or uh, even I think in, in, in Kasoda. And generally, 
even you see the faith towards Buddha, when you face, like Tibetan, I think just put faith to Buddha, uh, we completely neglected about our human level actions. Mm -hmm. So that's why we lost our own country, <laughs> isn't it? Mm -hmm. So recently I was in uh, a partner, the Bihar state, you see, they, they, as a day, I mean, they made a huge sort of uh, construction of Buddha Vihara, Buddha temple. So some uh, relics also, you see, they uh, sort of acquired from some different Buddhist countries. And also, I also see, offer one of these relics. So at that function, the chief minister, you see, mentioned the due to Buddha's blessing, the Bihar state will progress <laughs> rapidly. <laughs> then I told him, because I know him, very close friend. So if Buddha's blessing can help to develop, then Bihar state much earlier, much, much develop, <laughs> because Buddha's blessing there. <coughs> <coughs> but till chief, if effect, effective chief minister come, develop, development not, not not, not take place. <laughs> so Buddha's blessing must go through human's hand. I mentioned that. Uh, so that's a fact. So last, you see, several thousand years, I think at least four or five thousand years, you see people, you see, put all our ultimate sort of hope uh, on faith, on God. Now, recent, about two, two centuries, science uh, found science and uh, you mean technology uh, develop. Uh, then much of our hope now materialized by science and technology. <laughs> uh, last a thousand years, we just totally, you see, they're relying on, on faith. Uh, now without faith, concrete result now produced by technology and science. So people, including Eastern, uh, e uh, the East, this is relying on science and technology, much attraction. Uh, it is right. So, but now later part of 20th century, now more and more people are getting experience. And there's a limitation, material value. Material provide us physical comfort, and really, you see, I think get some kind of satisfaction uh, on the level of sensorial level, not real mental level. So mental level experience and sensorial level experience, mental level experience are much more serious, obviously. We, we, we can, uh, we, ex we ourselves have experience. When our mental state, happy, calm, our physical pain can subdue. When mental state, too much pain, too much worry, the physical comfort cannot reduce, right? cannot subdue no, reduce. the mental state sort of pain. So obviously, mental state is more serious. So therefore, now including medical science, uh, more and more now scientists in that field now realize mental state is very, very important for our health. So recent uh, our meeting with scientists, our slogan, uh, how, to how to create healthy body, healthy mind. So healthy mind, very much related with healthy body. So a healthy mind, you see, cannot be produced by medicine or alcohol mm -hmm. or drugs, no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> More illusions there. Yeah. Oh. Uh, so, so a healthy mind also you see, cannot, cannot be produced by injection, mm -hmm. uh, cannot buy from supermarket. Mm -hmm. So okay. therefore, the questions. healthy mind must develop within the mind from faith, some extent, <coughs> but no. The real change in mental level, uh, certain conviction, 
genuine conviction come only through research, investigation. So that's why uh, now these Nalanda masters, I usually describe Tibetan Buddhism as pure Nalanda tradition. That's the basic thing. Uh, I also is mentioned to our Buddhist groups, including Ladakh. I mentioned as well, Dongbo The tree, the ah. trunk, trunk. Trunk. Trunk of a trunk. trunk. No. And different no. branches. So Nalanda tradition, like trunk. Then Nyingma, Satya, Goyu, Gilu, Kadam, Chonang, and all these like branch. So recently I was in uh, one Rupakaju center. Uh, no. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, center. Uh, I I asked Rinpoche, since Rinpoche used to have a very good program for study, uh, not only their own monk, but you see the younger Tibetan people, younger Tibetan sort of uh, student. So very good program. So I, I mentioned the, like that, you see, trunk no. and branches. So these branches, important. Some, some special things there, like Dzogchen and Chakchen, Mahamudra, and Sakya Lamde, uh, and Sadong Sungju. You see, each one, good but all related with the trunk. So that's the, those Nalanda master, I, I usually describe 17 Nalanda master. So their text, that's the, because of the explanation about basic Buddhism. Others is in branches. So on, on top of this, full of knowledge about the basic thing, then these sort of special thing add very good, become complete. But neglect about the basic thing, just hold you see, these branches, uh, then sometimes you see, not complete. And also there is danger, mis misinterpretation. Mis misinterpretation, like that. And also as far as unity is concerned, if we all Sajay Nyingma Kaju Kilu Kadam Chanang, all is a go root. Uh, no differences. Uh, there's too much emphasis on branches, then there are little differences here and there. <coughs> uh, so now you see the, the point, Kasa, East West meeting. Uh, I feel not on religion, not as a religion, but simply. The science of mind and Western science mainly uh, focusing on uh, matters. Uh, so now, now last about 30 years, my sort of was the engagement, meeting with scientists. Oh, at the beginning, I think 40 years ago, uh, uh, I expressed to uh, some I use a friend. They say I want. Uh, I say the, cause I, I want to dialogue or discuss with scientists. And one one American lady uh, expressed to me, science is the killer of religion. Be careful. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, uh, your sort of presentation also is some something sort of connection here. So I thought. Nalanda tradition, even Buddha's own word, uh, if they found some contradiction with our experiment or investigation, then literally they reject Buddha's own word. Buddha himself also is made clear, oh my follower should not accept my teaching out of faith out of devotion, but rather thorough investigation and experiment. So these masters, you see, took the liberty to carry investigation 
even Buddha's own word. So therefore, the Tibetan word, so which are called the provisional teachings and the definitive ones. Mm. Uh, so therefore, I've taught, oh, Nalanda tradition, uh, emphasis investigation rather than faith. Uh, and also, you see, the whole Buddhist sort of, or say Buddhist sort of Kasoda system is firstly based on reality, today's reality. <coughs> then, according to that reality, make distinction, wrong view, right view, and most destructive emotion come through, come from wrong view, grasping. Self-grasping, self like that. Uh, so all the Buddhas, the Tambani said, true truth. True truth. True truth is the sort of explanation about the reality. Uh, because there is always a gap, appearances and reality. So many wrong view based on appearances. So in order to prove these are wrong view, we have to investigate what is reality. Uh, so on that basis, idea of four noble truth come. If four noble truth is just you see, relying on Buddha's word or Buddha state, four noble truth, that's wrong. We have to prove uh, four noble truth, or the, we have to know the re real sort of system, where no. structure. No or the Four Noble Truth, like that. Uh, so, so therefore, uh, so therefore I thought, scientists, science also is a try to seek the reality, the truth. Of course, different field. Buddhists also trying to seek the reality. I think both, I think truly, I think they're implementing the famous Ding Xiaobin statement, seeking truth from fact. So both tradition, through investigation, try to seek the truth, because the, the, the real, the fact. No. Uh, so therefore, I thought there's no contradiction. The scientific way of approach was the investigation. Keep skeptical attitude. Buddhism exactly same. Because <laughs> Uh, there are in the uh, classic text, there are mentions of four uh, points which are called the purpose of the text and the, uh, the, essential, the, the essential point or the uh, reason and the different uh, connections between the uh, points. Uh, <coughs> it mentioned the real sort of asoda, asoda, real sort of audience of these books should, uh, do, uh, those serious audience of these uh, books should have skeptical attitude. Whether uh, so containing the uh, content of this book, something relevant, our life or not. Uh, and for temporary, what benefit? For long run, what benefit? Unless the serious audience because of that, uh, aware clearly these sort of relevance <coughs> then follow the text then follow the teaching like that so that's exactly you see the nalinda approach you see the person audience must be skeptical skepticism brings question Question brings investigation. Invest investigation brings answer. Only that's the logical thing. So in any way, now West, Western science, up to, up to now, mainly deal with matters. Uh, very, also pay much, much less attention about inner mind, inner science. Now among the scientists, uh, some serious old scientists now really begin to pay more attention about mind, about emotion. Because these are very important, very relevant for our health and the society 
and family or individual sort of as a yeah. in, individual way. Yeah. So therefore, now that is the place where East West meet. This is my feeling. Not religion, just science. And therefore, since our meeting with scientists, uh, our conference with scientists, as a, some as a, some people as a, use the word of meeting science and Buddhism. Uh, then I made correction. This is wrong. We are not discussing with with scientists about Buddhism. No, B only Buddhist science. So I made uh, dist uh, distinction. Actually, three parts: Buddhist science or science come from Buddhist literature. Philosophy come from Buddhist literature and Buddhism. So Buddhism for Buddhist. Buddhist science, Buddhist philosophy is the universal. Uh, so, so I feel now already some meeting. Uh, Western's top scientist now really paying much attention about value of training of mind. Uh, like Wisconsin University, under the leadership of cousin David, uh, Richard Davidson. Richard Davidson. Uh, he already carries some <coughs> special program about the uh, training of mind, these things. And also cousin Stanford no. University last few years, and this time I just visited this, uh, this area. Oh, their experiment, a really wonderful result. Uh, and then Emory University, uh, so like that. Uh, these are nothing to do with religion. Simply, they say, try to utilize some of the information which come from Buddhist text use as a science method, scientific method to train our mind, to, to, in, to, to strengthen our basic good quality of our mind, which comes from our mother, like that. So meeting science, because of modern East. science, or Western science, and uh, Eastern, uh, East-West meeting, I think that's the uh, sort of proper place. Religion is concerned now. I always make clear the you, Westerner, uh, better to keep your own tradition. Mm. <coughs> of course, out of millions of people, there's some individual like you, these people. <laughs> you see, I think some of you uh, in, uh, in six days like happy, isn't it? <laughs> uh, so a little bit confuse your own mind. <laughs> And a little bit of sort of rebellion, sort of rebellious attitude towards the exist <laughs> existing sort of what's the because of the situation, situation including religious faith, isn't it? Uh, so you uh, go here and there and here and there, <laughs> like Kasuta, Kasuta, short call meeting such. You don't have any direction, as if. Oh, uh, just okay. Uh, and eventually, you found you see the. Uh, so sort of some sort of uh, the mm. new idea. Yeah. So okay, <laughs> if you really feel this is something something has uh, useful, something helpful, uh, then okay. <laughs> like Tibetan, uh, more than ninety nine percent are Buddhist, but at the same time, uh, among the uh, among the Tibetan, there are Muslims, uh, and in I think, in since I think twentieth century, some Christians also there. So it is possible uh, among the Westerner, Judo Christians sort of the background, uh, some extent Islam, so some of them is in their own tradition, uh, not much sort of effective, and they remain as a non-believer. <coughs> and meantime, they also a little bit sort of also restless, mental mental level restless, and, and then found some Buddhist training, training of mind, some. Sort of the benefit, so follow that. Okay, that's an individual, <coughs> individual right. Now religion, Buddhism. <coughs> 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 
object. The trunk. According to the trunk, no. the basic Buddhist sort of teaching is concerned, as I mentioned earlier, skeptical. It's very essential. Uh, now, I hope I'm Buddhist, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but I have no longer f uh, the conviction about Mount Miru. <laughs> no. Mm. I think still I'm Buddhist. <laughs> as far as the true truth, for noble truth is concerned, there's something very reality. That really answer for whole sort of cosmic, 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 no, cosmic or <coughs> galaxies, or the Big Bang. Mm -hmm. We have the reason, sort of some explanation. Uh, so, uh, so that's that's real teaching of Buddha, Buddhism. Uh, I think uh, when uh, when I was in Kasada, I saw ashram. That's now 40 years ago. 40 years ago. So one occasion <coughs> I mentioned Buddha did not come you know, on this on this kind of planet making map. <coughs> no. <laughs> so whether there's Mount Miru or not, that's not Buddhist, <coughs> Buddhist business. Doesn't matter. Uh, uh, like that. So we have the r sort of uh, liberty to reject Bosubandis some sort of Bosubandis explanation. Uh, like that. So these we must make distinction. The the symbolism, right? Yes. Symbolism. No. Long. Symbolism. symbolism of its teachings. And like Kala Chakra, as you mentioned, all these is Mount Mount Miru, all these is symbolize human body. Uh, from from here up to the up to the soul. Of the oh, like that. So so many tantric explanation. This is related with that. So there is a certain sort of kazota meaning, right? No, certain meaning. purpose. Simple. Uh, so now on if we go root, no sort of emphasis, importance of devotion. If you go these branches, then like Mahamudra or Dzogchen, then Guru Yoga, very important. So that actually is spoiling some of these lamas. <laughs> these centers become cult. Uh, so, so why? Forgetting basic Buddhist teaching, just these branches. These branches, you see, come uh, like a Naroba, the main teacher of Marba, the Kaju lineage, main sort of person. Uh, Naroba, uh, one of the great sort of scholar of uh, Nalanda Monastery, Nalanda Institution. Then later, you see, he uh, practiced sort of. Tantrayana, uh, uh, Tantrayana, and then he, you see, looks like be <coughs> beggar or sadhu like that. Uh, so here, Naroba have the full potential practice these things because he study all the important text which available in Nalan tradition. Okay. Uh, now some of the some of the now has the practitioner in the West, uh, among Tibetan also, among the Ladakhi also, without knowing the foundation of Buddha Dharma, Buddha Dharma uh, whatever Lama say, even Lama say West is East, or he or she believe, oh that's <laughs> the East. That is against the Nalanda tradition. No. Of course, the person who really fully qualified the basic sort of knowledge about Buddhism. The Lama also, not just high throne, re. No, like me, high throne. <laughs> but the re, re, real experience is very limited. <laughs> uh, so according to my own experience, uh, now it looks I'm a little bit because of jealousy, these Lamas. So. <laughs> 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 You see, uh, I think without a proper, full of knowledge, 
There's just an emphasis in these branches. That creates a lot of misunderstanding. That's important. So that's why I always is telling Tibetans and also Chinese. Are there any Chinese here? Yeah. OK. So like Japanese or Chinese, uh, I'm sort of telling them, and Ladakhis, or all these Himalayan regions of the Buddhist, I'm telling, now we are 21st century. We should be 21st century Buddhist. That means full of knowledge about modern education, modern science, all these things, and also utilize modern facility. Meantime, full conviction about Buddhist teaching about infinite altruism, Changjujisem, and the view of interdependency, Patitasamupan. Uh, then uh, you can be genuine Buddhist. And also you see, with fuller knowledge about uh, modern thing, also belongs to the first century. Recently I was in Nubra. On the road I stopped our lunch, there were some local people, you see, came. Uh, and some of them we know since, I think, almost, I think, 20, 20 30 years ago. So then I checked them. Then I asked. Then again, I mentioned we should be 21st century Buddhist. A study is very, very important. Then I asked, what is Buddhism? Then they say, uh, that's Buddhism. Too simple. Uh, then I ask whether there's differences. Well, what differences Buddha and Jesus Christ and, and Muhammad? They say no differences. Mm. Oh, not that. Mm. <laughs> as far as great as a sort of, as a great teacher of humanity is concerned, same. Mm. But teaching is concerned, big different. Yes. Buddhism is non-theistic. So one day, you say, I discuss with you whether Buddhism is atheism or not. You mentioned, isn't it? Vana uh Samarve, -huh. Czech, oh, Czech Mare, Yugoslavia. Mm. So one time you mentioned uh, atheism means anti-God, then Buddhism is not anti-God. Buddhism respects all religion. Uh, but the atheism, in the sense, no creator, no concept of creator, then Buddhism is kind of uh, atheism, like that. <coughs> so, so in, the, in the teaching side, teaching side, philosoph philosophical side, big differences. <coughs> but these, you see, uh, uh, or the villager, see, they, they felt it's the same, mm -hmm. uh, like that. Uh, so, so that reminds me, one time in Tibet, see, uh, one lama giving some teaching, and some people ask, where is, uh, where is uh, three jewels? Where is three jewels? And uh, where is Buddha? And he kept, kind of kept quiet a little bit, and then pointing, in the sky, or in in invisible sky mm -hmm. or space, uh, in casa, glass, glass palace, <laughs> crystal, crystal palace, oh, crystal palace, oh, crystal mm -hmm. palace, the Buddha with full light remain there. Mm. Is it not true? <laughs> uh, Buddha ultimately here, isn't it? Buddha nature, Tathagata Garba. Hmm? So in any way, in any way, uh, therefore, I want to share with you, we must uh, go to the real basis of Buddha Dharma. Then on top of that, like you see, main food, rice or flour, or in the case, samba. And then some vegetables, beautiful vegetables, eh, very good. Without sort of subtle way. Color no, The main food, the main no. course. Oh, oh, just a few vegetables, just a few sort of, what's the uh, other thing? Not sufficient. Like that. And that's important. 
Then Western Buddhism, idea of Western Buddhism. As you mentioned, one, one lady, one, one person, Gita said, no, no. that's perfectly all right. Hmm? Perfectly all right. <laughs> you know, the Buddhism originally come from India. And then when reach different places, with sort of or say they mixing with local cultural heritage, then it become like Tibetan Buddhism, Chinese Buddhism, uh, Japanese Buddhism like that. Uh, some of the instrument which we Tibetan monastery use uh, uh, not come from Nalanda tradition, but from Chinese side. So the very name. The because flu survey. No, the Obu. 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 No. Obu. No. It's in in Tibetan. It's literally called Gyaling, which means the Chinese flute. So. Mm. And some of these monastery uh, person is who who has, who use that also is dressed like Chinese. Silly, <laughs> isn't it? That's not part of Buddhism. That's a culture part, culture aspect. So similarly. You see, the, in Western sort of Buddhist community, use the modern instrument uh, and s some prayer in the tune of Western sort of the song. Okay, there's no problem. But as far as idea of four noble truth and altruism and all these concern, you see, 2,600 years ago, human emotion, today's human emotion is the same. Buddhism dealing with emotion. So since the p people's emotion last, I think, three, four thousand years, I think same. Mm. And next few thousand remain same. After 10,000, 20,000, brain, some, some shape, some new shape of brain come, <laughs> then maybe a little different. <laughs> uh, that is too far. <coughs> so our generation and second generation or third generation uh, no need any modification. <laughs> same human brain, same human emotion. That's you can ask scientists, those brain specialists. You see, they say, oh, same, same brain. At least it's the next few, uh, few centuries, no change. Like that. So basic Buddhist teaching must be authentic. One time in France, I mentioned the uh, New Age Survey. New, what what call new age, yes, new or age. something? Oh, take something from here, something from here, something from, oh, and then finally, not authentic, like that. It is not good. I think we must keep the real Nalanda tradition. That's very important. Cultural aspect change. Uh, so like that. So I think all the important point I think I touched. Mm. Yes. Yes. Ka. See, it was turned into questions. We got to be careful about that tomorrow. Mm. But it was turned into questions. And about hell. <laughs> Concept of hell. I do not. I I find it very difficult to accept. Bosubantes Abhidhamokoshakarika uh, mentioned. Under. Bodhigaya, the Kazajut, Nduo Tondra Nishuna. Twenty leagues beneath the uh, Bodhigaya. Mm. Uh, the Yangtze. There is the hell out, realm out of, called, out of, uh, out of Yangtze. Out of eight. No, uh, I care I out of that. the eight different hell uh, realms. Uh, the Pakse, much, much longer than uh, kilometer. Nice. Oh. So, uh, the, so yeah. if you go. Further, further, then most probably hell existence in Amer America. <laughs> <laughs> From directly for that. <laughs> so, if America is hell, then disgrace. <laughs> good, good joke. <laughs> so, these are, you see, not difficult. You see, they, uh, they weigh Kazata. Uh, yes. 
So we have to understand things uh, which are obvious to us uh, with our sensory or, uh, perceptions. And then there are certain other things which have to be understood through reasoning, through inference, uh, based on reasoning. And uh, then the third thing, uh, the important thing is that there are certain things which are, could be taken on the authority of the scriptures. That means, you see, relying on third person. So I often, you see, telling people, like it's our own birthday. Uh, we have no, so no way to, uh, to investigate what's the, the real birthday. We have to rely on third person, including our mother. And, and also, you see, in order to sort of say, accept the third person sort of say, description, first we have to prove that third person uh, is right. honest, <laughs> or reliable, mind normal. <laughs> uh, so test some other field that third person you see mentioned, these which we can investigate. So then the third person, sort of his or her same statement, in those fields we can investigate, we investigate it very correct. Therefore, now <coughs> this person, truthful, no reason to tell lie, or kasada, you don't know what Or pretend things. Ah. Pretend to pretend oh. to, yeah. then accept the third person's sort of statement. So like that, there is some of sort of very, uh, at this moment, very, very mysterious level sort of some phenomena. We have no experience. Then those experienced person who actually experience, and that also, you see, we can check they are sort of writing. We can see, oh, they are writing, according to their writing. This sort of point mentioned according his, his or her own experiences. And reliable. But through that way, then we accept now such, such point. Uh, for me, beyond my sort of reason, uh, reasoning. Yes. No. Uh, uh, so I must uh, rely on the third person sort of statement or third person sort of expression uh, like that. Uh, so uh, uh, so some of the uh, Buddhist literature sort of uh, explanation uh, we have to. Uh, uh, now again, according uh, Parmana, same, same. Logic and epistemology. Epistemology. Uh, epistemology. Uh, epistemology. Uh, the, uh, there are certain reasons which are called the reason with regard to the uh, positive phenomena and reasons of negative phenomena. Uh, and then uh, within the, uh, the negative uh, reasoning, uh, there is one uh, reasoning which is called uh, reasoning uh, where you, uh, where the, the, the phenomena that you are talking about should be actually um, uh, perceived. Uh, whereas, and whereas so it should be perceived, you are not Mount able to. Miru. Oh, Mount Miru, sun and moon, according to sun and moon, you see, uh, same, same level, uh, and going round Mount Miru. So day and night also is to come through that way. So Mount Miru's shadow, we actually experienced, experiencing. So if we experience its shadow, then that real one, we must, we must see. In ancient time, in India, including Basuband, uh, he may not see, he cannot see the Mount Miru. But now we have spacecraft, <laughs> so must see. <laughs> oh. So, 
Mena ayinde mami var olacak. Yes. So therefore, uh, if the Mount Meru were to exist, we should be able to see it. Therefore, since we cannot see it, we can say it's not existent. Then I get me with that Yes, and then there is Can a reason. Can they turn the Yes. And then there is a reasoning where you can prove something um, by seeing the opposite of what you are trying to um, prove. No. And uh, not being able to see uh, what is related with that. Oh. So these are the Dignak and also the Dharmakirti. See, they are text. It's clearly mentioned about these things. <coughs> so, utilize our, our own sort of Buddhist epistemology. Epistemology. Uh, ka? No. Uh, uh, it easily proves non existence of Mount Miro. So, it's a no problem. <laughs> so, like that. In one time in South India, uh, the big gathering about the Kasa, the monk student, I think. I think more than 10,000 monk students. Yes. Uh, uh, so all major monastic institutions, students, you see, gathered there. So there I mentioned uh, this in my view mm, about the importance of science, and we must learn science, modern science. Uh, and these things I mentioned. And then Mount Miru, these things I don't believe. So then I also mentioned, oh, please don't consider me as an atheist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> don't consider me as a nihilist. Uh, uh, so the first day, I explained about these views. You are there. Uh, so the first, by sort of teaching, first day, my teaching more on the sort of relation between Buddhist, Buddhist, Buddhist science and Western science. And then second day, and then I sort of explain about the Buddhist teaching. So then I sort of explain about the Buddhist teaching. So the first day, um, teaching more on the sort of relation uh, His Holiness was being more innovative in his teaching, and the second day was more traditional, uh, uh, religious. Like that. So, so in any way, so it's a no problem. No problem. Uh, <coughs> now, perhaps I think some may be constructive criticism. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, among Tibetan also, you see, this is possible. Uh, particularly those people who doesn't sort of study no, the philosophical uh, text. The sort of the, the big text. Uh, then in the West, you see, I've met you see, some people, no, a little bit, but then felt, oh, full knowledge. <laughs> uh, then, you see, they, uh, then due to their own sort of limited knowledge, you see, certain misconcept, then, you see, they create. Uh, I, I think there's one, one I can, I, I think I can, I can as well share with you. <coughs> Up immediately after earthquake, sort of great earthquake, right, uh, in San Francisco, one my visit uh, there. So my driver, at that time, not from the state government, uh, st state department. Uh, the one private is a model, has a model. And then driver, uh, one of the uh, center's sort of member uh, who practiced Dzogchen. Mm. And I, I casually ask, ask him, when the great earthquake happen, uh, what do you feel? I asked him. And he mentioned, oh, great opportunity to practice of Dzogchen. <laughs> I think shock, great shock. So, some kind of thoughtlessness. Uh, so he 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 sort of feel that's the auction practice. I think that is quite easy. If you hit 
and then perhaps can practice Dzogchen. <laughs> Dzogchen not that easy. I myself used to practice Dzogchen. Oh, oh, very difficult, very difficult. Uh, so, so in any way, therefore, you see, there is sort of saying, little knowledge, kasa is dangerous. Uh, dangerous. Uh, little knowledge is dangerous. Uh, it's, 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 that also, you see, a little bit truth there. Mm. <laughs> so be careful. Yes. Study. Uh, and uh, not relying on Lama's sort of instruction. Relying on this authentic book. That's important. Don't rely on my word. Study this as the, as the authentic yes. text wrote by this like Nagarjuna, the uh, in Kasari, Arya Deva, Arya all Deva. these, you see, the, uh, the 17 Buddhist masters. They, through centuries, they already tested you see, by those scholars. Once, like um, the Arya, Arya Asanga sort of some writing, argue with uh, some other sort of philosopher. Uh, so some, some Nagarjuna sort of write, write writing a little sort of, sort of sort of criticism from uh, uh, Arya Asanga, and then again you see another sort of uh, master you see analyze. So these real sort of sort of the great text wrote by this master, the through centuries tested, experimented, so really reliable. Uh, and then also. You know the Toha. Toha? The spiritual songs. Spiritual songs. There is very sort of individual practitioner like Naropa or Telopa. Tara study, the not in the tradition. Then through practice uh, give up all worldly life, uh, including monastic life. <coughs> completely sort of Hasoda. Hasoda. Live as a mendicant, ah. live like a mendicant, ah. yogi. Oh, then you see, through their own sort of experience, uh, some poems. Mm. So that, according to their own sort of deep understanding and simple word, so there is danger, misunderstanding. So if a person knows the basic sort of tradition, uh, like the like Nyingma tradition say, Nyantu Rangye Changsim Kunjung Jembe Tepasum. Yes. So these three uh, yanas, the uh, Shravaka yana, Pratyaka Bodhiyana, and the Bodhisattva yanas, are uh, the. Kunjung uh, Jembe Tepa. Yes. Uh, they, no, they are based mainly on the understanding of the Four Noble Truths. Mm. Then, Triya Upa Yoga, Kudu Rijik Tepa, Sangra Shivshati. And then uh, the three next yanas are uh, Kriya, Upa, and Yana are uh, emphasized uh, on these, emphasize on uh, cleanliness, oh. the practice of cleanliness. Triya Upa Yoga. Then, Ma Anu Adi, Wonju Tepji Tepa. And then the last three yanas are called uh, Maha Anu and Adi yanas, which are uh, for uh, the uh, total control of one's mind. Mm. Total control of the methods, practices. No. no. The real meaning is let emotion develop. And while emotion there, the your main mind not become slave of that emotion, but rather the uh, so the, uh, rather look the ultimate the nature of the emotion. That's clear light. Chazanga nyomu nyomu teni poya me mche nyomu nyomu teni nyomu shangandu me dong nyomu rengshin taichi. So in these three yana, last yanas, the uh, destructive emotions are not looked as, uh, at as ah. something which you have to ah. overcome as such, ah. but you look oh. at the nature oh. of these destructive emotions, oh. 
and see the reality. Mm. So this, you know, you see the, uh, the, uh, what's that? Uh, the, on the basis of deeper experience, then different sort of way of practice. So some of the expression from high level who have the kasoda, experience. who already is passing through these sort of kasoda stages. Mm -hmm. And their expression, uh, difficult to practice our level. Mm. Uh, like you see, nine, nine stages. Nyandu Rangye Changsim, Tiyo Uba Yoga, Ma Anu Ati, like that. So these are not easy. So now I think today stop. Now here. Mm. So tomorrow, uh, now today, apologize, because uh, of that. Uh, for being. I, I, I spoke. Right. Yes. So now tomorrow I will remain silent. So more questions come. Thank you. Thank you.